Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Land Rover Discovery 4, then I'll take you for a ride in it. But first, uh, I'll tell you a bit more about it, and then I think I'll have to go home for a shower. I don't know. Excellent. <laughs> that that is absolutely excellent. <laughs> well, I've I've had some heckling before, but never <laughs> I've never been sprayed with Wow. <laughs> it's it's actually in the air. It's a 3-litre SD V6 HSE automatic four-wheel drive. 2015 on a 65 plate, has done 58,725 miles, one registered owner from new, fuel consumption, urban, 33.2 miles per gallon, extra urban, 39.8 miles per gallon, and combined is 36.7 miles per gallon, has a 0-60 time of 8.8 .8 seconds, a top speed of 112 miles per hour out of a six cylinder, 256 brake horsepower, 24 valve engine. Road tax, six months is 187 pounds and 12 months is 340. Well, <laughs> I don't know why they say that smells healthy because it's making me feel sick. Anyway, we've got high pressure headlamp wash, front parking sensors, plenty of ground clearance, which is just what you want in, in the country or if you're off-roading or anything. Got the multi-spoke alloys. It's got Pirelli Scorpion Zeros all round. This car's mint and it's in a fantastic and unusual color combination. Um, I, I absolutely love it. The, I, I think it's it's beautiful. The person who ordered this uh, this colour, um, thumbs up. It's it's really nice. Got the wheel arch protectors there. The silver side vents. Power folding door mirrors. The door protectors here. It's got keyless entry. Uh, keyless lock. Keyless entry. Keyless go. When you leave the car, so long as you've got the key on you, if you just click that button. When you come back to the car again, as long as you've got the key on you, hand behind the door handle, and then it just opens, opens all, all the doors and puts the mirrors out again. We've got the aluminium roof bars here for the carrier system, and also the three sunroofs in the car. Basically, you've got two seats here, Three seats here, and you can also pull an extra two up in the back. Really, really handy if you've got family. Split rear tailgate, so top folds up. You've got this roller blind load cover, so you can just chuck your luggage in like so. If it's anything more, flatten the back here, and it's, it's sturdy enough to uh, be able to sit on. And you're also kind of protected for the, from the rain. Probably more protected if you sit on this side than this side. So uh, the back seats, two back seats here, fold up. Really, really easy to do as well. And, and it's a perfectly flat load area when you've got the seats down. You've got reversing camera there and reversing sensors in the, the bumper. Lovely seats. This car, honestly, it's it's absolutely mint. The seats are beautiful. These, I always say, it, they don't look, they don't look like they've been sat on. But these look like they don't look like they've been sat on less than other cars that I've I've reviewed. It's so nice. It's uh, you, you've got these the three individual sunroofs in the back over each set of seats, and they, they've got this little shade band if it gets too hot for you the, the sun's too hot or glare glares too much for you lovely 
piano black insets in the doors. Uh, so these, these seats fold flat too. It's got uh, the carpet mats um, over the original carpets, which, which are mint. We've got heated seats on the outside, the two outside seats, the, the, the one in the middle there gets a cold bomb, unfortunately. But it, it really is a credit to its previous owner. And I mean, the, the story we got in, we'd already bought it, we'd already paid for it, and it, it was underwritten off a, a, or bought off a main dealer. And the, the salesman who gave us the keys when we went to pick it up said it, it had belonged to a doctor and he had it fully serviced. They went through it completely um, b before he part exchanged it because he wanted to make sure it was a good car for the next customer or the next person that owned it. And uh, I wish everybody was like that. <laughs> I really do. But anyway. I'm banging my knee. I'll just take you for a ride in it. So there we go, there's the key, but as I said before, it's uh, keyless go, so as long as you've got the key on your person, foot on the brake, and just press the start uh, button. Let me just tell you the service history. Uh, and this, I actually forgot the most important bit, uh, the, the stuff that the previous owner had done, but just before he part exchanged it. but. Second Land 2016 at 15,288 miles, Land Rover Gloucester. 31st of 10th 2017 at 25,246 miles, Land Rover Gloucester. 1st of 11th 2018 at 36,766 miles, Land Rover Cheltenham. 30th of 10th 2019 at 46,618 miles, Land Rover Cheltenham. 16th of the 10th, 2020 at 51,735 miles, Land Rover Cheltenham. 4th of the 11th, 2021 at 58,315 miles, um, all track 4x4 Malvern. And as I say, it's, uh, it's done. Let's just check. 58,725 miles, so. 400 and what 410 miles since it was serviced and it and i know i said it before but it's a credit to its previous owner and it's such a beautiful color combination i love the color of the the seats and also you've got this contrasted kind of chocolatey color dark chocolatey color and this whatever color you call that top I, I i don't know anyway i'll take you for a ride in it and those of you who were, were wondering why I was laughing while I was reading the service history out, um, it's not because the service history was funny, it's just that when I, when I came to photograph it, I got it all set up and uh, got the camera out and using my good camera and my, my good gimbal, <laughs> about five grand's worth of equipment just, just out there. And just as I opened the door, the farmer downwind um, started spraying his fields with, with manure. And there was a big waft, and it was a very fine spray, I've got to say, but I got covered in it, and so did my camera. I mean, it, it's, you've got to laugh, haven't you? Good grief, you'd go mad if you didn't. Anyway, it, it, what do you expect in the country? It's uh, that's that's country life, I'm afraid. But we, to be fair, we're in the right car for it. I mean, just you probably can't see it, but somebody see that grass verge there. The, there's a road on the other side. Somebody has come up here and come flying over that grass verge and into this field. You, you know. I mean, you'd be all right in this. If you're in this, no problem. But I still, I still wouldn't like to do it in this. And this is probably the best of the lot. The heated seat is nuclear. So I'll switch that off. And then we'll get going. As you can see, they, normally, if, I, if I'm in a saloon car, I, I, I'd go right around the outside and very, very gingerly and also over this 
a bump at an angle here so it doesn't take the spoiler off but um, the, these are brilliant I actually feel a bit high up in this and I don't know why probably because I'm used to driving a Range Rover and it's I mean it's it's pretty much the same but just if anything it's a, it's a nicer ride uh, we've got power folding door mirrors this has got electric seats and it's also got electric memory seats here um, three position electric memory seats they're heated and th this is the layout I like and the dashboard I like and the switches I like everything is nice and easy easy to use screens big enough not too complicated you've got Bluetooth hands-free Bluetooth audio streaming sat nav we'll just click the sat nav screen on so you can see it there you go so you know where we are and um, it's got a heated front screen all the stuff I is it, almost essential I would say in this day and age heated front screen in this weather especially the heated seats are lovely you've got proper you know all, although it does have the temperature display in the center you don't need it you don't have to look at you you don't have to take your eyes off the road to set your temperature to a certain degree you just turn it till you're warm enough like so and your heated seats you don't have to look at your heated seats you switch it on and if you just want it on position one you click it twice and there you go position one you don't have to look everything in Land Rovers up until recently um, is uh, it's absolutely foolproof it's a sheep could drive it I, I'll probably get comments now about calling sheep stupid but you know you get the point it's got the gear selector I, I like the rotary gear selector so we can just knock that over press it down knock it over and we're in sport if revs immediately jump it it makes it more kind of sensitive or more responsive but it's great in drive um, just trying to see if there's anything else we've got cruise control again just coming up to a bend but can't set the cruise control while I'm braking as you would expect there you go one one button cruise controls on just uh, we'll just knock it off this cancel there is resume and that will be speed limit is it anyway that's the problem we're not worried about indicators on the left wipers on the right where they should be and not a gear selector like some German models have this this is beautiful you know this this scenery this setting this route in this car and the weather isn't particularly good it's quite mild today but the weather forecast said it's going to rain at 12 o'clock and it started spitting about 10 minutes ago so uh, you know we've got a few minutes left got the, the front center armrest a big front center armrest here and we'll just certain death corner There was a few cyclists out before. Not not the nasty ones. They were they were nice old guys enjoying themselves. Not the lycra lists. The suspension's so good. So you've got you've got your three sunroofs. Five seater normally with plenty of luggage space if you're prepared to uh, compromise your luggage space you can have the extra two seats in the back probably more like child seats but there's uh, you know for a short journey an adult could uh, <laughs> put up with it got height and reach adjustable multi-function steering wheel just all ah, right yeah that's also electrically adjustable 
So when you set the steering wheel and the door mirrors, in fact, we'll just uh, we'll just do it, I think, because it's something I always forget, and it, it's such a good feature where every time you know if there's if there's two of you driving, you don't have to sh move everything when you get it back in. I'll just pull over, although the postman will probably catch me up in a bit, so I'll just try and find a a clear spot. I don't think it's a castle, but it seems to be hovering. Oh, yeah, it is. It is a castle. Right, um, the seats are really, really comfortable. And uh, to be honest, I, I think the reason why I feel a bit higher up than normal is, is that whoever's had this must have weighed about three stone because the the driver's seat like brand new and, and the sponge in it is like brand new and, and not you know not slightly sunken down which is how I'm used to getting them now now I don't I don't get new cars anymore I do like the discoveries as I say, I, th I think they drive better than the Range Rover Sport. Whether it's to do with the tyre combination or or not, I don't know. But um, I prefer the look of the Range Rover Sport. But if you want seven seats um, in the older vehicles, although you, you can even get seven seats in the Range Rover Sport now, but there's not so many of them. Right, I'm just going to pull up over here where people can see me. So if I, if I pull up over here and then we set the mirror where I really want it, left and right, the steering wheel, and here we go, get, yeah, get a bit further back and then we want memory one. That's bonged to say memory one's set. So now if I, if I go somewhere else, you see, that's... Oh, that's the previous one of the previous persons. So you you'll see in there the mirrors all change and so the steering wheel. And where I've set it now, if I click position one, there you go. Steering wheel, mirrors, see all back to where it, where I wanted it. So that's that's really worthwhile accessory. You've got your terrain response controls there. There we've got power sockets at either side. That's your front heated screen and your rear heated screen. Gentleman of the country there in a Range Rover. You cut you really, you can't beat them. They're the best car on the on the road. And I just I just can't see why some people give them so much grief, but I was watching, I was watching um, a, a program, and, and basically the explanation is old X5, <laughs> a battered old thing. The explanation is that because people can't have something, and they don't want you to have it, they make up all sorts of stories or, or exaggerate stories that they've heard. You know, like about vehicles or because they don't like something you know perhaps it perhaps they just don't like the shape perhaps they don't like the people who drive Range Rovers I've, I've got to say some of the people who drive Range Rovers annoy me you know the ones that park on WL lines and, and, and in disabled spots when they're not it, you know it's it, it drives you mad but uh, I've seen a fair amount of BMW drivers do that, also Audi drivers, so, uh, you know, but it just seems like everybody wants to bash the Brits and let Max Verstappen win instead of the, the rightful winner yesterday. Here we go, Extinction Rebellion pheasants again. Yeah, there you go. 
colourful, pretty thing. Yeah, they do, they do drive better than the Range Rover Sport these, definitely. And you never know. It, it might just be the weight, the extra weight. Because it's a bit taller goes around the corner, sways a little bit more, but seems smoother. This is a lovely car. Telephone controls on the right here. There, you control your information display in the center between the speed on the rev counter. There you go, close menu, show warnings. Yeah, get an electric car, GoPros. I don't know which one switched off. That looks like it's that one switched off. That's not too important. But uh, fully charged. What we've been going 10 minutes, and it's it's actually probably overheated or something because uh, the battery's fully charged. The SD card's empty and it switches off and it's only seven degrees. So yeah, best of luck with your electric car in, in summer when you're charging it. It can't be a diesel engine. This will still be going when you're, all your electric cars are in the scrapyard or on fire somewhere. I still can't actually get my head round. A battery is just as heavy when it's, when it's flat than it is when it's fully charged. So imagine sending a rocket to the moon with electric power. You know, it, it's they're going to have to have, I mean, obviously, they, they, well, I, I don't, would they jettison it? Would they need to? I don't know. It, it just doesn't make sense. You know, you, the, the manufacturers are, are getting rid of things like spare wheels and telling you not to carry extra stuff in your car so you get more miles per gallon. And then they make electric cars with a battery that weighs a tonne that's just as heavy when it's flat as it is. So you're having to carry it round all the time. Whereas, whereas this, do more miles to a gallon when you've done 300 miles on a full tank and it's nearly empty. Uh, but your, your Teslas and, and the like, just the same. You're carrying that weight round all the time. It, it just it's just not logical to me. Oh, we've got the old boys here. Now, according to Lancashire Police, you've got to go past the cyclist and leave them one and a half metres, which means, unfortunately, I'm in this four-wheel drive and I'll, I'll just have to go up this grass verge. I think there's going to be some more in front of us as well. Just uh, here. So that's hill descent on. There you go. It's just letting me go down the hill without touching the brake or the accelerator. We'll just knock it off. Hill descent control off. Oh, 
so there we go. That's that's tilt and slide. So that's going all the way back. Old couple in the camper van there, the, the cyclists behind me catching me up, they're gonna they're gonna take me overtake me if I'm not careful. And I, I, to be fair, I don't want to go any faster. You know, it's coming up to a bend here. There could be someone coming around the corner and I've got cyclists behind me. <laughs> Says the bloke who, who used to try and make the uh, speed camera go off on the hill at Walkley Dale on my bike. Yeah, the, the cyclists behind me, they must be doing, they must be doing 30. It's a good job they've not got DRS or else they'd be straight past me. Which is probably why they only let that race yesterday go for one lap. So Lewis didn't have DRS and, and would probably have overtaken Verstappen again and still won. Can't get over that, honestly. <laughs> I don't even like Lewis Hamilton, but I, I just feel for him. I think he was absolutely robbed. Life's not fair. Still, I suppose. <laughs> At least he didn't get showered. He got showered with champagne and not <laughs> manure when he got out of his car. Close that. Don't get any whistling noises. Well, we've got climate control anyway. Bags in the A pillar, probably the side here. I know certainly in the seats. I can see them in the D pillar at the back there. And again, we've just gone over. It's a real big. Just before that grate all the tarmac's worn away and there's a real big hole and the, you just go over it as if it's not there. I said hello to him way, way back about an hour ago. He just looked at me as if I was no, if, if I wasn't there, I don't know. Beautiful to drive. Best four by four by four. Yeah, I watched Top Gear as well last week, and uh, Freddie Flintoff had had to self-isolate but the car he chose to go to Iceland in was an old Range Rover and Chris Harris was in a, a Chevette and you know I can't remember what uh, Paddy McGuinness was in. Oh well Rolls Royce how can I forget that and I think they both wanted to uh, they both realized that, that if Freddie had been there <laughs> it had been it had been sorted a lot better than they were Range Rover you can't beat them. 
Thanks for watching.